Hi, this is Christy Ainsley at Ohio State. I'm here today to talk to you about Cellodextrin, or ACDEX. It's a biopolymer we use in our lab, and we have a couple publications that I'm going to discuss with you. So ACDEX is formed with the reaction of dextrin in the presence of an acid catalyst uh, with either 2-hethoxy or 2-methoxy propene. And when we react dextrin, we get cyclic and acyclic acetals. Dextrin itself has been used for decades as a plasma expander and is FDA approved for that purpose. And with our modification to ACDEX, we get a uh, water insoluble polymer that can be used to form a variety of different constructs. The primary construct uh, that we use are micro and nanoparticles. So these can be formed through a variety of methods. The one in the pictures here are formed through emulsion chemistry, which is a batch process. We can also use electrospray which is a continuous process. Um, and so with either method, we can actually encapsulate organic soluble or water soluble uh, moiety, so peptides, proteins, as well as small molecules that maybe have a low uh, water solubility. And so we, we've used uh, nanoparticles a lot. And so we often deliver them subcutaneously, although they can be delivered through multiple routes. And this uh, histology is showing a subcutaneous injection of ACDEX microparticles or microspheres. So we took mice and we injected about 10 mil milligrams of particles subcutaneously. And then after two weeks, uh, we stained the tissue for h &E staining. And what we saw was a marked decrease in uh, neutrophils as well as mast cells. And the foreign body response seemed to be reduced slightly, too, because the multinuclear giant cells were also um, minimal with the ACDEX microspheres. Uh, we also know, too, that with PLGA, um, so polylactic codalkylic acid, which is FDA approved for drug delivery through primarily subcutaneous routes, they have degradation products of lactic and co-glycolic, uh, lactic acid and glycolic acid. And so these are acidic byproducts and have been shown by numerous individuals to shift the local pH of the tissue upon degradation. We know with ACDEX, the degradation is dextrin, uh, ethanol or methanol, depending on the formulation, and very small quantities of acetone. And so acetone is a common metabolic pathway outcome, so it's, it's a common chemical in the body naturally. Uh, Furthermore, all those materials are pH neutral. Dextran will further degrade into glucose units. And so it's a much more, uh, it has much more desirable degradation products than PLGA or other polyesters like polycaptolactone. We also use a porous pulmonary construct in our lab. So this is, uh, they're kind of like wiffle balls. They're, they're semi-hollow. Uh, somewhat porous, and so the whole idea is that they are uh, light and be, can be carried in the airstream for deep lung penetration. And so we showed that we can uh, deliver a chemotherapeutic with these, and we used a model lung system to show that we could get deep lung penetration. Our third construct we have published in our lab are the electrospun fibers, and so these are using ACDEX to create fibers or mats um, that can be used to deliver drugs or they can be used to grow cells, and they can be applied inside or outside the body. So what's unique about ACDEX is its degradation rate. So I discussed how when we form ACDEX, we have both cyclic and acyclic acetyl coverage. And so that varies with reaction time, as you can see in the left-hand graph. So you can see the red, green, blue, and black arrows. Those correspond to the red, green, blue, and black lines on the right-hand graph. And those correspond to different degradation profiles and different degradation times as indicated by the T-half. So the red line has a degradation T-half life of 7.5 minutes, whereas the black has a 27-hour half-life. And this is at pH 5. At pH 7.4, it would be about 2 logs slower. And so what we say is with ACDEX, we can get unique degradation profiles that last minutes, hours, and even months by varying the cyclic and acyclic coverage as well as the polymer uh, molecular weight. And this is quite unique because when you look at, for instance, PLGA, its degradation rates on the order of a month. And it can be varied somewhat by changing the copolymers, but it's pretty fixed because of the ester degradation rate. 
The tunability of ACDX was then used to explore how well it activates T cells for the creation of a vaccine. And so in this graph, what we're looking at is we're looking at how efficiently uh, different biomaterials are able to activate CD8 T cells. So CD8 T cells are cytotoxic T cells. They're very important for protection against intercellular pathogens, uh, like bacteria, like tuberculosis, any viral infection, several parasitic infections, including leishmania, malaria. These are all these are all diseases where the host cell or the cell that uh, is holding that pathogen needs to be essentially um, apoptosed or killed uh, in order for proper treatment of the disease. And so a CD8 cell does that. CD8 cell also can be used to kill cancer cells, such in the formation of a cancer vaccine. And so here we used a model antigen, OVA albumin or egg white. And so we're looking at how efficiently these different materials present OVA to uh, different immune cells and then activate CD8 T cells. And so we have iron oxide beads, which is a non-degradable material, polylactic co-glycolic acid, or PLGA, which is a material we discussed earlier, which is a slow degrading material, polyacrylamide, which is a fast degrading material. It's also acid sensitive. So another feature that's unique for ACDEX is its acid sensitivity. And the reason that becomes important with immune responses in immune cells is because once an immune cell engulfs a particle, uh, there's a pH shift from approximately 7 to about 5 um, in pH units that can cause, um, in this case with polyacrylamide or ACDEX, triggered release intracellularly of material because they're acid sensitive. So the, the polymer will degrade much more quickly at a lower pH than it does at a, at a higher pH. And so polyacrylamide is acid sensitive and then ACDEX is also acid sensitive. And so you can see that the Lime green boxes are slow degrading ACDEX, and the blue boxes, the blue circles rather, are fast degrading ACDEX. And so the fast degrading ACDEX actually outperforms all these other biomaterials because of its uh, tunability with degradation as well as its acid sensitivity. So it's the most efficient material for presenting antigen. So then we use ACDEX to formulate an anthrax vaccine. So anthrax has a known antigen. Uh, recombinant protective antigen, which is indicated as PA. And when it's encapsulated, there's a backslash and an MP. And so the current FDA-approved formulation of the anthrax vaccine is PA plus alum, which is the lavender circles. Uh, and then we use PA with another adjuvant, rizicomod, which is a TLR78 agonist. And so we have um, formu different formulations here, and basically our control groups, uh, which would be the PBS or the empty particles MP, uh, they did not survive the challenge, the initial challenge, but all the other groups did survive the challenge. So we were able to show that we have some efficacy with a vaccine formulated um, with ACDEX that's comparable to an FDA approved formulation. Furthermore, we know that because uh, the schedule on this vaccine is a little bit shorter than what you normally see, that we were getting a strong cellular response, not just antibody response, um, because the mice were challenged 14 days after their initial vaccination, which is not a long enough time for antibodies to be um, manufactured and developed in the body. Not only do we use ACDEX to uh, create a conventional vaccine, but we've also shown that it has some efficacy to do a treatment vaccine. And so what a treatment vaccine is, is is just a manipulation of the immune system similar to a vaccine, um, but instead of prevention, it's used once the disease is onset. And so what we have here is a experimental autoimmune encephalomyelitis, which is a multiple sclerosis model in a mouse. And so we gave the mice uh, EAE, and then we waited until they became sick. So we waited until basically they had hind limb paralysis. And so that's around um, three a clinical score of three. So then once they got to that level, we started treating them. And so you can see the treatment indicated with the blue arrows on the x-axis. And so we gave them three treatments of 
ACDAX particles encapsulating dexamethasone, so that's DXM, and MOG, which is an uh, antigen, autoantigen for MS, it's a peptide sequence. And so we gave it to them three times, and then we observed their clinical score over the course of 45 days. And what we saw is even with just three treatments, we were able to significantly reduce uh, the clinical scores where we were taking mice that had hind limb paralysis and we were able to basically resolve their disease state until they had basically a limp tail and some weakness in their hind legs. So they went from completely unable to use their legs to being able to use their legs uh, with, some efficacy, with some efficiency as well as just having a, a minorly limp tail. So another advantage of ACDEX is that it, it stabilizes proteins across a broad range of temperatures. So dextrin has been known for years to be a cryoprotectant. Uh, and so here we kind of show that ACDEX behaves very similarly. So we stored ACDEX particles uh, encapsulating horseradish peroxidase, which is an enzyme, over four different temperature conditions for 90 days. And so what we saw was that um, whether we, and so these were emulsion particles, so we used sonication or homogenization to, com to make these particles, and it's usually known that homogenization is a kinder way to make uh, protein-based particles uh, through emulsion methods. And so what we can see is that although there is a decrease in enzyme activity, which is comparable to the free protein, which is the lower left-hand graph, uh, that no matter what temperature the particles are stored at, they essentially have the same activity. So uh, basically, ACDEX stabilizes proteins in, that it encapsulates, and it can be used to store these proteins outside the cold chain. Uh, we've also shown that uh, encapsulation ACDEX can significantly reduce drug cytotoxicity and increase drug intracellular loading. So these are macrophages that were treated with either free drug or drug encapsulating our particles, and so this is a proprietary drug, um, so that's why it's referred to as drug addicts. It is an actual drug, it's just in this situation, um, we're not referring to its name. Um, and so what you can see is that the, the free drug itself is toxic around 5 micromolar, but we can load it up beyond 10 micromolar with uh, our encapsulated drug. And so the reason why there's a sharp decrease with the free drug is because the, the cells are um, dying basically at 5 micromolar. So we're able to increase the drug loading and decrease type cytotoxicity with this particular drug and other drugs. And this translates into more efficient delivery. Um, and some of this has to do with the acid sensitivity of our polymer. Some of it has to do with intercellular release uh, due to the acid sensitivity, um, as well as the fact that ACDEX is a, a benign polymer. And so what you can see here is um, different inflammatory cytokines. So there's an interleukin-1 beta. Uh, interleukin-6, interleukin-12, and MYP1-alpha. And so these are pro-inflammatory cytokines, and these are bone marrow-derived dendritic cells, so they're a type of like white blood cells. And so the black bars indicate free drug. The white bars indicate drug that's been encapsulated in ACDEX microparticles. And what you can see is that at a, a given concentration of drug, there's actually significantly greater activation with the encapsulated uh, drug compared to the free drug. And so what this tells us is we're getting this dose response, uh, dose sparing response, where basically less drug is creating uh, equal cellular activation, so less drug is needed to activate the cells compared to the free drug alone. So I've talked to you today about ACDEX um, and discussed some of its properties, that it's acid sensitive and so that it can, has a triggered release intracellularly uh, when it's taken up by immune cells, has a low toxicity. Uh, it increases efficacy of antigen presentation to T cells. And I discussed CD8 T cells, but it mirrors the response with CD4 T cells. ACDEX outperforms the other materials with CD4 activation as well. It has neutral degradation products, and it has enhanced storage outside the cold chain. The current constructs we've, we've published on in our lab are the micro nanoparticles, as well as the microporous particles for pulmonary delivery, as well as scaffolds. Um, and there's so many more that we're working on. Also, uh, we've applied them to vaccines, vaccine-based treatments, as well as sustained drug delivery. 
And so from my lab as well as uh, Jean Frechet's lab, who was uh, where ACDEX was originally developed, there's been about uh, 19 ACDEX papers published, equating to about 313 citations of ACDEX papers. The original paper was a Journal of American Chemical Society paper, or JAX paper, uh, where, there, where that paper alone has been cited 92 times since 2008. And then the follow-up paper to that was a PNAS paper that talks about the tunability of ACDEX, and that's been cited 55 times. So all this publication is translated into grant dollars. The original work was with John Frechet at Berkeley to establish a cancer vaccine. Eric Batchelder, who's one of the inventors of ACDEX, was able to parlay that into DOD funding to develop bioterrorism vaccines, which is also part of the DARPA funding, as well as the later DITRA funding. Eric has also received funding through Juvenile Diabetes Research Foundation, Popovich, that is for uh, spinal cord repair. Tracy Poppenfuss's work is with uh, immune responses. And then I received uh, additional funding to do drug delivery. Uh, Cook, with Charles Cook, that is to do uh, viral infections. And then I received some funding through, as well as Eric, through Arno Therapeutics to develop and basically deliver their compound uh, better. And then the grant with IBA is for parasitic infections. In total, in the last five years, we've received about 10, over $10 million in research funding with work that involves aspects of ACDEX. And so uh, I think this illustrates well the promise of this material and the potential of it. And thank you for your time, and have a wonderful day.